All right, guys, welcome back to the vlog. We're going to do a two year ownership review of my K67 S1000 RR. I wanted to make this video after two years of owning this bike, tell you guys what I've done, any problems I've had, and any uh, issues that I see forthcoming. And I will go over what the bike has cost me up to this point in maintenance, what the bike has cost me in terms of mods and what this bike uh, and the plan is for the spikes. All right, so we'll start with the maintenance aspect of things. So 1000 kilometers is when I got my break-in um, procedure done. That procedure allows you to unlock the uh, bike's full tack and power. Uh, it's set by BMW and I'm gonna go in kilometers so for the Canadian folks and miles, you guys can convert. Um, and after a thousand kilometers, the bike's ECU is fully unlocked by BMW. And after the ECU is unlocked, um, BMW doesn't oil change because the brake and oil is in. Anyway, so that cost me uh, around $600 Canadian to do to unlock and do the oil change. After the $600 service, the bike had a thousand kilometers on it, as I said, around 1100 is when I actually went and got my service done. I performed a uh, ECU tune or a flash tune from Bren Tuning. And Bren Tuning, uh, a, a stage one, it's an ECU tune, and it cost me about 1300 Canadian. And what that does is the mid-range power from around five or 6,000 to eight or 9,000, in, in between there, it, it gets rid of that little emissions cutoff and, and makes it uh, livable again, is the best way to explain it. So I got the brand tune done, uh, and that cost me, as I said, 1300 Canadian. And now the bike, uh, when I did get the brand tune done, that was around 1800 kilometers. So I waited around 500 kilometers after I got the bike unlocked and got the brand tune done. And alongside the brand tune, I had a Acropovic full titanium headers and a GP shorty exhaust installed. Um, and the reason I did that was because without removing the cat in the motorcycle, the catalytic converter, uh, tuning the bike itself isn't usually the best uh, idea if you're gonna do the exhaust anyways. So the exhaust plus the can uh, ran me about uh, 1300 for the can and uh, about 3000 for the headers. So you're looking at uh, $4,300 Canadian for the exhaust system. And to install the, the, part, uh, the parts, it was around, I, would, I think it was around $300 in labor from a shop uh, I go to. And so the total cost of that was around uh, 300 bucks. After the exhaust, I did the TST taillights. TST makes amazing taillights for these bikes. And TST taillights cost me around 500-ish Canadian dollars with the uh, plate bracket and the uh, uh, removal of the license plate light, which they give you a plug. And the reason I did that was because I didn't want to do the extra wire. So that's, as I said, around $500. Um, I did the Rizoma mirrors, which you can see here, um, or the cheap, I guess, the Rizoma mirrors. They were around 150 Canadian. What I added on to the bike for aesthetics was also carbon fiber from RPM Carbon. And the total cost of the pieces I added, which were three pieces, the rear diffuser, the side panel, uh, and the front fender, uh, I, that cost me around another uh, 2000 Canadian, including shipping, taxes, all that. In. Okay, so that's the cost of the, the parts so far for the bike. Um, anything that else I've done is more of a customization. So I did the seat. The seat cost me uh, with upholstery. What I did was I sent it to uh, overseas to India, actually, to a shop, a Vendetta project, and they were able to do my seat plus shipping everything for about a thousand Canadian. I got a custom logo made. The custom logo is of a panda. Obviously, I go by 
a V10 Panda. Uh, so they made a custom logo for me. And the tricolors on the side keep it simple with the red stitching, which I love. So that was the customized uh, mod for the seat. As I said, that's a thousand bucks. Okay, so that's all the modifications for the bike. The bike itself, around 5,500 kilometers, 5,500 to 6,000 kilometers, actually had an issue with the, um, the pump at the, it's a coolant pump. It's a common issue known to the S1000RRs, the K67s, and the bike itself uh, was uh, given, uh, actually what, what it is, I took the bike back to the dealership, and the dealership performed the recall, or you could say the fix, for the um, coolant pump uh, under warranty. When I purchased the bike, the bike was purchased with an extended warranty. So I have a total of seven years of warranty for the S1000. This is a 2022. So that means that my warranty will run out in 2029. Um, from my understanding, as long as you're not doing internal engine mods, uh, from my service advisors, advisor said that uh, the, uh, the tune itself, if, as long as you're not making the restrictions for the uh, tack, uh, any, any changes to that, so basically over revving the bike, uh, you're okay, they'll, they'll be okay as long as, again, the tune's not really you know, making any changes to any other parts. Okay. Otherwise, other any other issues I've had with the bike, um, I've actually had one or two other issues with the bike. They're not that big, but they're issues that I guess you could say are there from a quality control perspective. On the front side of the bike, I had some flaking of the, um, I guess you could say the polish of the, the plastic, and I don't know where that's from, but I will eventually change that to carbon fiber anyways, the front air duct. So I've had that issue. The other issue is in the rear diffuser, not the diffuser, the rear hugger, the tire hugger. Uh, there was a couple of bolts there that were coming loose from vibration. And how we fixed that was using uh, plastic nuts, uh, plastic nuts and washers. It seems to have done the trick uh, in terms of fixing uh, the vibration issues for the, the bike itself. Um, overall, I have put 8,800 kilometers on this bike. Uh, 8,800 kilometers, I've only had that coolant issue. Um, the bike has been serviced from the dealer and the other costs that I've incurred beside the initial six or seven hundred dollars that I paid for the service to unlock has been just an oil change. And an oil change plus the adjustments and uh, dealership does a little bit of checking up on everything so far has cost me another extra $300. I know BMW S1000s, especially this generation, have gotten a rep of being really expensive to maintain. And while I do agree they are more expensive than Japanese bikes, uh, they're actually not as bad as people make them out to be. Of course, if you're doing more and more modifications, they will tend to run you, uh, you know, a little bit more on the ex uh, maintenance side. So overall, that's been my experience with the bike. Uh, it's been great and uh, little things here and there I had really didn't include like the windscreen and whatnot. Those are things that just I, as I said, they're kind of cosmetics and uh, they're, they're okay in terms of price. Another, you can tack on another maybe $300, three to $400 Canadian for some protection pieces, the windshield and whatnot. Um, I wanted to make the video, as I said, because I've owned the bike for two years. I bought it brand new and I've been super happy with the bike. And I wanted to give a feedback of around 9,000 kilometers. This is what the bike has uh, been able to, you know, show me of what it is and what the problems occur. The one thing uh, at the time I bought the bike um, is that I actually did not spec the bike with the M chain. I should have got the M chain from the factory, but I, eventually when the, we uh, the chain uh, wears out, I will change the chain and that will be probably my next uh, change yeah, overall i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you guys enjoyed the uh, little run through of the s1k in the last two years and i look forward to riding the bike for another couple of years before i see if i need to change it or keep it around what the other maintenance costs will be so maybe in another two years i'll make another video uh, giving you guys an update with more kilometers and uh more wear and tear on the bike hope you guys have a good day 
enjoy the vlogs um, and make sure you guys subscribe, like, and comment. And I'll see you guys on the next one.